So in New York City, they have decided to put this statue right here up in front of the court building in New York City, okay? Now, evidently in front of this court building, they have like a statue of Moses, which we know Moses is the giver of the law. Well, you know, God gave it to Moses, right? But we know the story. So Moses represents the law that God gave and it's in front of the court building now. And then there's other statues of other legislators throughout history. So this statue, they just recently put up, and this statue, the name of this statue is called Now, N-O-W, Now, okay? That's the name of the statue. It's a golden image. If you pay attention to her hair, I wish I could zoom in, but I can't, but you probably, oh, well, I can, okay. Lord, okay, thank you. So you see her hair is braided, and it's into two horns, right? And then her arms are weird. Um, if anybody has any, like, spiritual interpretation, and she's standing inside of this flower this lotus um flower she's coming out of the flower and everything like that so we know you know of course this statue is demonic anytime you see those horns coming out of her head right so the statue is called now and the statue is in reference to the abortion um thing so that's why it's a woman she's naked it's showing her femininity she's coming out of this flower it has something to do with like rebirthing and whatever it has to do with so so now the New York Times wrote an article in regard to this statue and the in the commentary in the article, it was basically saying like to the legislators that are legislative statues that are currently sitting in front of the building in front of the courthouse building is saying move over Moses, move over so and so. Um, there's a new legislator. There's a new legislator and it's now. So we know that there's spiritual implications behind it. And we, when we look at the scriptures, we know that, you know, when, when in the book of Daniel, when the, when they were required to bow down to that statue, that was legislation. That was legislation. It was decreed by the king. That was a law that was legislated. You know what I mean? In the book of, um, of Esther, the reason why the, it was legislated to kill the Jews is because Mordecai did not bow down, which was legislation. It was law. It was decreed by the king. So it's by legislation that they get you to conform, get you to bow down. It's by legislation that they get you to, um, you know, do what it is that they want you to do and worship and submit, submit, right? So anytime that they're telling us that, this is now, and this is the new legislator, and it's sitting in front of the New York City courthouse. I don't think that this is anything to be ignored, not to mention that, you know, if we, if you've been following this line for the last few years, we've been, we've been talking about how they are, they have been um, secretly and not so secretly passing laws and trying to pass certain laws to bring laws into effect that's going to strip away our rights, our religious freedoms, our freedoms of speech, so on, our medical rights, so on and so forth. So the fact that they are letting us know that there's a new legislator, move over Moses, there is a new legislator, and this legislator is demonic, it's, no, it's a no-brainer. So that this is very important because of the times that we're moving into. So I don't want anybody to ignore this, and let's just get ready and be prepared because what we said was coming, it's coming, it's all unfolding. And then some of us may look like we're crazy or we look like conspiracy theorists, but like we can't make this stuff up and they're proving it to us and showing us this. And so like, if we're not getting ready or prepared spiritually and building up our most holiest faith as long as they continue to legislate and, um, and we're not ready, you know, so, what y'all got on that? I just wanted to say that before I go to the next thing I wanted to just talk about really quickly. What y'all got on this though before I go to the next thing? What do her arms mean? Why do they got, I'm not. Hold on. I'm... Oh, I took it down. Did you need me to put it back up? No, no. Okay, okay. What do her arms mean like that? I don't know, sis. I don't know. That's why I was asking if you guys have any spiritual interpretation of what the details of this statue mean. I don't know. Mm. It, um, that's deep because isn't that the same place that they had that bull erected to? They put that bull out there. 
New York just been kind of deep, though, because they put that bull out there. Them, remember that demon I told you they put up against that building? And um, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's creepy. It is. It's creepy. But the devil know he got to set a point in time. He knows. You know what I mean? But, man, I, I can't even begin to try to break that down because I'm at a loss. But I just think they're sick and perverted. They are. And we keep saying, sis, I know uh, you and I talked about it. We talked about it over this line and we feel it in our spirits. Many people who we know that are um, spiritually awake and not asleep, they're saying the same thing. They're like 2023 is a transition year. I keep hearing it. I keep feeling it in my spirit that things are be, are going to be shifting this year. And then they put this up here, this new legislation. Oh, that's good. Uh, Sister Toya put in here, she said, I feel like her arms being like, we're not going to have control mm. soon. Wow. Oh, mm. you know that that's so true. That's deep. That's powerful. What's that Carl Swab said, we will own nothing and be happy. But, you know, they have, they have set up in their heart to just defy God in any way or shape or form that they can, not knowing he is permitting. He's permitting. They, this ain't catching him by surprise. This is being permitted by him. At the end, he is still in control. And that's why he let them know, listen, he can't even appear to who, how the scriptures say, to who he would let him appear you know what I mean? Whatever God say has to be taken out of the way for the Antichrist to even make his presence known in the earth. They are still on God's timing. I don't care how they try to show themselves strong. At the end, my God has the last say so or when they allow. Until he say go, they all got to stay in their place. Sister Erica, we didn't hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. No, oh, what happened? Okay, okay. We can hear you now. Oh <laughs> no, I was just I was just saying amen with um uh, sister Serena. I was just I was just agreeing. They just don't have no darn understanding, I tell you. And yeah, so I was just saying amen. Thank you, Sister Serena. Oh, amen. I'm in, man, that's deep, but I appreciate what the other sister, you said Toya said too, that they trying to take the strength. That's deep. That, I mean, no control. That's deep, but I believe them. They are wicked and perverse generation. That's what Jesus called them. And I'm going to say what he said. I think this goes in direct line with the satanic temple um, that we were talking about um, this morning on the prayer line. I think I may be able to find a link for it where they're doing the abortions um, as part of a religious ritual to sacrifice these unborn fetuses to Satan. So the fact that all of this is coming into play all at the same time is definitely letting you know that the agenda that they have is moving forward quickly. Um, and just like you all said, Satan knows that his time is short and now he is ramping up everything. It's so much different, so many different things going on right now we could stand here all night and talk about all the different things that's going on and still wouldn't even touch the surface of the madness that's going on in this world. They are grooming our babies for pedophilia. Parents don't care for their children. They're not protecting their children. There's so much going on. They are sacrificing 
um, their babies to Moloch. Moloch is that God who they sacrificed these babies to. Um, Ishtar, that I think that statue may be a representation of Ishtar, which is supposed to be that that fertility, so-called for God of fertility. Um, that was another goddess that the pagans worshipped back in the day. And so all of this stuff, remember God said that all of these things were going to come back. They're going to make an appearance. It's going to be like it was in the day of Noe. It's going to be worse. It's going to be like it's never been before. So we're going to even surpass um, how it was in the days of Noah. So buckle up, ladies, because we ain't seen nothing yet. The enemy is ramping up. His time is short. And this is an indication to us that we need to get on this wall of prayer and we need to stay on our faces before God because there's so many people that are not being prayed for. There's so many people that are not praying. There's so many lost souls out here, y'all, and they're going to be utterly consumed by what the enemy is bringing forth into the earth. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. I do think it's relevant that the statue was created by a Pakistan Stanian artist. Um, I think I find relevance in that, but that's just a personal opinion. But I just say, let's just take note of all of this, y'all, because again, we're just being watchful. Um, and then this, the second thing I wanted to say was, um, oh, go ahead, sis, go ahead, sis. I'm sorry. I just wanted to second that what Elder Marie has said because about us staying before the Lord and in prayer. Because I know that's what God gave me at the beginning of this year. He let me know the most powerful position we could be in right now is in prayer. And it's just beautiful how you end up coming together with this one accord. It just confirmed what I felt like God had spoke to my spirit. So I'm in total agreement. Like we go even harder in prayer. It's so powerful. How can we not? And like the country and the world is under new legislation, y'all. And it's not a coincidence that the, stat the statue was in New York City in Babylon, USA. You know what I mean? Who is running and controlling the world? Like, come on now, the world system. So it it's no coincidence. This is not just a New York thing or a USA thing. This is a worldwide thing. The world is under new legislation. So yeah, like where else could we be but in prayer? And we need to be praying. <laughs> we need to be praying. Um, you know, we need to be in the spiritual gym, like you and I talk about, sis, like being in the spiritual gym, building up our most holy and faith. We need to be keeping our eyes on eternity, y'all. Keeping our eyes pressed to eternity because the persecution is coming. If you're really being watchful. We know we can't believe everything that we see on the internet, but I'm seeing a lot of persecution. Like I seen a man who um, was literally just walking in the mall with a Jesus shirt on and they asked him to leave. Okay. He, they, he said, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not soliciting. I'm not preaching the gospel. I'm just shopping. And they asked him to leave. Okay, yes, yes, honey. I was just about to mention that one, Toya. Then, exactly, that's the one that really just blew my mind. Okay, now, mind you, then I told you about the couple who was preaching the gospel and they pushed his pregnant wife, okay? Then, just the one with Sister Toya put in the chat, I seen this one. This one is mind-blowing, y'all. There was a woman who was standing, she was standing in front of an abortion clinic. She didn't have no picket signs. She didn't have no signs or nothing like that. She was just standing there. She wasn't praying out loud. She was literally praying in her head they arrested her and they said they asked her was she what was she doing and she was like I'm just standing here and they said are you praying and she was like what in my head or something along them lines she was like I'm not praying out loud I'm not saying anything and they arrested her that wasn't in this country that was in the UK but but still y'all 
they arrested her for praying in her head. Now, whatever happened after that, if they let her go on her own recognizance, if she just got a ticket or if she's still sitting in there, I don't know. But they arrested her because obviously they knew that she was a Christian or whatever it was, and they arrested her for praying in her head. Now, these are just may seem like small things, like, oh, you know, those are little things, but those are foreshadowing what is to come. We're under new legislation, y'all. The laws are being changed before our very eyes. The um we're under new legislation. So this is no coincidence. Like these are the things I'm seeing. And I'm just like praying that we are keeping our eyes on eternity because that's the, if, if we, that's the only way we're going to be able to stand firm. If our eyes are pressed to eternity, because if we're keeping our eyes on the now and the right now in this world, and we, and we always quote the scripture, like, oh, this thing, everything now is temporary, it's passing away, but do we really understand what that means? Because the only way we're really going to be able to die for this gospel is if we, our eyes are pressed on eternity, because, you know, when we look at the example of, of like, even Stephen in the book of Acts, when he was martyred, you know, he looked up to heaven when they were literally beating him, they, he looked up to heaven and he's seen the father, glory. he's seen Jesus in his glory sitting at the right hand of the father. And it was because he had his eyes on eternity that he was able to die for the gospel. So being that we're under new legislation, come on now, like we have to keep our eyes and our minds on eternity. The persecution is increasing. It may look small now, but it's foreshadowing what's to come. And I truly, truly believe that. What y'all got before we go on? I um, agree with you because you know what? The other day I happened to be just like, watch, just working in the house and kind of like watching a program in the room that I was in. And it was talking about the black church and it started off talking about religion and slavery. And, you know, it just kept going forward and going forward to different, the civil rights movement. And it kept, but by the time, it started getting towards the end. It was like, there were like all these people on there that were trying to say that, I mean, well, they, they weren't trying to say, they were saying that God didn't even exist. That was just something that somebody made up for black people to believe in. And I mean, I, I just turned off the program after that because I was like, this is getting to be a little much, you know, because this program, it just, it was just like taking from one place to another. And by the time they got to, you know, I guess it would be now, but it's probably been like maybe some of those, those years have passed too, since some of these people said some of the things that they did. And they were basically atheists, you know? And I mean, these were like black people within a group that were atheists. Sadly, I saw a video of a former pastor. I think he was a Baptist pastor who now goes around preaching that the Bible is fake. It's a made up story. He mocked the story of Jesus' resurrection. He, um, I mean, totally, totally disgracing the gospel. Some of the stuff that he said, I'm saying that as a pastor, he preached this truth and now, you know, now he's been turned over to a reprobate. And he's preaching that God is made up, that the Bible is made up, that uh, you you ask a Christian, where is, well, if he died and where's he, where's he buried? And then, um, then they'll tell you that he got up. They'll tell you that he got up and then everybody just, you know, everybody in the audience just laughed. They were just, they thought it was so hysterical that he was mocking uh, Christ's resurrection. This was a former pastor, y'all. And he, he, you could tell he was a pastor because he was still, even in giving this monologue, he was still in, in preaching. He was preaching it, but he was preaching antichrist. Hi, 
I know exactly what you guys are saying because um, over the weekend, hear me out first, y'all, before y'all judge me, okay? <laughs> but I started to study a little bit of, you know, I don't, of the Muslim belief. And I started digging into that a little bit because um, the, and as I was studying it and trying to understand what they believe and what they believe is about to happen because it's relevant to what we believe is about to happen. Um, I started to like listen to a lot of their commentaries and listen to a lot of their, you know, teachings and whatever. And of course I prayed first, I said, Lord, you know, but anyway, you know, I, I was like, wow, I I'm listening to the way that they take everything from the scripture and the way they they twist it. But it's so amazing to me that um, they actually take the Bible like, okay, for instance, so this was the next thing that I was going to talk to you guys about, and I, I'll get to the point. So, okay, we talked months ago about how over in Israel, those Jews that call themselves Jews, but are not, they, remember, they said that they have the Yanuka, and they have been in contact with the Messiah, with their Messiah, and that they're going to be revealing him soon. And we know that the, the, the temple, the third temple is in the works to being built and so on and so forth. So we talked about how it's just kind of almost comical that they really like are just talking to the Messiah and that they're going to reveal him to the world who they believe is the Messiah. So we talked about all that. Right. But and we talked about how the third temple, where the third temple would be built is on the same that same plot is where the temple used to be, is where they have a mosque, right? There's a mosque, an a Islamic mosque there, right? So we talked about the potential of what could happen. Would it be war? Would they just come together? What would happen, right? So evidently, when Israel became a nation back in 1940, what was it, 1940? I don't know the year. Was it 41, 43, something like that? 48. 48, okay, thank you. When is when when Israel became a nation, they Israel, okay. This is Israel's domain, right? But Israel gave, I guess maybe to keep peace. I'm not sure why, but they gave uh, the Muslims control over the Temple Mount, okay. So so the Muslims control that. So they don't allow the Jews to just go on the Temple Mount willy-nilly, and they definitely can't pray. There's definitely restrictions, and they definitely are not allowed to pray there, okay? So, um, oh my goodness, I've seen that too. I've seen that too, people getting unbaptized. So they don't allow Jews to pray there. So recently, a Israeli official went on the Temple Mount, okay, and took a tour of the Temple Mount. Now, their government... So rights is over Israel, but they don't have, but so anyway, it caused a big uproar. It caused a controversy to the point where it made the United Nations have an emergency meeting because it was disrespectful to the Muslims that this Israeli official would go on to the Temple Mount, okay? So it, it's causing a conflict, okay? So now mind you, the temple is in the works, in the process of getting ready to be built. So they're, they're, they're ready to build there, okay? But, but the Muslims have control there, right? So now, the Muslims also have what they call the 12th Imam, right? So this is what I was studying because I was trying to understand this the best that I can. So they have what they call the 12th Imam and their 12th Imam is, they also call him the Mahdi, okay? The Mahdi and Mahdi means um, the awaited one or the one who will guide. So essentially the Mahdi is basically a fake messiah when you really come down to it and guess what this Mahdi is supposed to do y'all the Mahdi is supposed to come at the end times and the Mahdi is supposed to come and restore order and, and bring forth justice and make everybody bow down the whole world bow down to Muhammad to and, and be you know bow down to Muhammad and conform to Islam okay that's what the purpose with the Mahdi is so that sounds just like the Messiah you know besides the whole Islam thing right so it's it's crazy to me how they <laughs> basically have stolen it so it was so many things that I noticed that was like stolen from the Bible and revelations but it was just flipped around now we know of course it's no surprise to us because Satan 
is an imitator and he, you know, he, that's what he does. Right. So I'm saying all this to say now, supposedly, supposedly there's, you know, there's different sects of Islam. So they have the Sunnis and the, oh, what's the other word? They start with an S. I don't want to forget. Shia. Shia. Thank you. Thank you. The Sunnis and the Shia. And supposedly they're saying also that the Mahdi is here. Like just how the, the Jews are saying in Israel, the Jews that are not, they're saying that the, the Messiah is there. The, they're saying that this Mahdi is here and they're ready to reveal this Mahdi to the world. So if, they're, if their Mahdi is here and they're ready to reveal this Mahdi to the world, mind you, there's already some controversy over that territory. What's going to happen next, y'all? Because if that's the goal of the Mahdi is to make everybody bow down to Islam, then what's next? So I say this to say, be watchful. Watch what's going on over in that area, in Israel, Iran, um, 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 you know, in that whole area. Because if you know, dang, it, I forget the country. I want to say it's Iran or is it Afghanistan? Ooh, I can't remember which one. I should have wrote it down. But y'all know that there's a there's a rebellion going on. This the y'all seen this, right? There's a lot going on. But just be watchful. You know, over there they have what? What do you call those? The police. They're called moral police, right? And they go around and they police the women because you know the women have to wear the hijab. They have to be covered. And so if the women aren't covered properly, then they will arrest them. And supposedly this has been going on for for a long time, where they arrest these women and they actually beat them and and rough them up, police brutality or whatever, because you know they don't treat the women you know respectfully anyway over there. They treat the women bad anyway. So recently, this was the end of last year and about. September of last year, a woman, a young girl, she was about, oh man, I should have wrote this down. She was somewhere between 19 and 20. Don't quote me y'all. But she was young. She was in that young range and she was arrested because her haji, her, her haji, haji wasn't on right. And they arrested her, but they, they beat her. And then the police, the government tried to cover it up and say that she committed suicide. They tried to do a Sandra Bland on her y'all an American uh, government thing on her. And then, but her family said, no, she was, she didn't commit suicide. Y'all killed her. So because of that, the women are leading a revolt and they're taking off their hajibs and they're burning them. You may have seen this on the internet because women over here are cutting their hair and, and throwing it in the trash and stuff to in honor of these women in support of these women, women's rights and stuff over there. So the women are leading these revolts and these rebellions over there and they're trying to overthrow the government. The government is losing control because a lot of the men are supporting the women and, and so on and so forth. So the government has no problem with setting examples to the point where, like they said, over 200 um, civilians have died. And even some, they went into a high school, a, a high schooler took off her hijab and did whatever she did with it. They went in the high school and they killed that young girl. So it's a lot going on over there. There's a lot of civil rioting and stuff like that going on. But anyway, the whole point is pay attention, be watchful, be mindful, because if it is true and they have their Mahdi, what's next? Because the Mahdi has come to bring justice and make everybody bow down to Islam. So that's going to cause a war. That's going to cause, you know, then the Bible talks about Israel being surrounded. And then we know, you know, so anyway, pay attention, be mindful. Those are the things that I wanted to tell you. I got one more thing, but what y'all got before we go to the last thing? The Bible tells us to keep our eye on that area. When we hear, mm -hmm. war, when we hear them say war with Iran, that's that's the beginning. That's it, right there. So that that's what I wanted to say about keeping the eye and the ear open for that area. They talk about warring with Israel all the time, but it's not Israel you listen out for. It's Iran. As soon as they say we struck Iran, uh, the the war started in Iran. That's it. We're there. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was this is why the Pope is trying to do this one world religion because he's trying to bring everybody under one banner, you know, saying that we all serve the same God. You know, they, they all serve the same God. We don't. But this is why he's trying to bring Muslim and Buddhists and Christians and Islam and whoever else. He's trying to bring everybody together. So as a means to get us under this one world religion, this one world government, so that um, 
it can all be controlled. So when Mahdi comes and when the Jewish God comes and they're trying to bring all this to pass. So when the real Messiah comes, you know, because he always remember, you see Satan is a, a copier. He brings um, confusion before Christ ever gets to come on the scene. And he's allowed to do this, mind you. It's not nothing he has the power to do. He's allowed to do this because, you know, Christ has his own agenda and allowing Satan to do things. Just, just like when they knew that how, how um, our Messiah was going to be born, they came up with all their, um, all these different religions have a mother and child version of of, of Yeshia and Mary. You understand? So they yeah. imitated and put all that stuff out front before the true Messiah came. So that's why he gets mixed in with all these other little gods, you know, because they're trying to confuse you. They're trying to muddy the waters. So, and just one more thing, and I'm going to shut up. Right now, everything is on women empowerment. And I'm talking all over the world. And that's a trick of the enemy as well. God's order is man, woman, child. Man is supposed to be the head. He's supposed to be the protector. He's supposed to be the provider. They have removed man. They have weakened man. They have lessened man. If you notice over here, they're talking about masculine women and all this old foolishness they're talking about and all this women's power and if you notice now we got movies and stuff out where all the women are the superheroes and all this old foolishness because the woman is the weaker vessel the woman the woman is the vessel that was beguiled by the devil and so when you put that woman in front you weaken the front you weaken the family you weaken the resistance to the enemy and and women don't want to hear this you know, they don't want to hear this because I can do what a man can do. All that feminism, all that liberalism, stop it. Stop it. I don't want to be a man. I don't want to be in a man's place. I want him in front of me, protecting me and providing for me like he's supposed to be. And I want to be in the back doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But the world is so skewered and so crazy that it's it's like an infection that has spread. And all of these women all over the world and all this women empowerment and what they don't understand is the enemy is counting on that because women are ruled by their emotions. We're irrational when we get in our feelings. You know, we get super just, you know, we don't think when we get in our emotions and the enemy can use that to overtake and overthrow not only the family, the family unit, but just people as a whole, because men are stepping back and letting women take this front role. And we are in trouble, y'all. And this dead infection has spread and all over out in the Middle East. And you would never hear about that. You would never. And the fact that the men are backing them up. You know, yes, they mistreated the women for years and years. But put all that emotion. Now think about all that bottled up emotion and rebellion and you sitting it out front. What you think is going to happen with that? So this, again, another, you are just bringing more and more reasons, sis, that we need to, when we be laying down, praying for our sisters and praying for one another, we need to be praying against this Jezebel spirit that's in the land. We need to be praying against this, this backwards, uh, trying to, to um, tear down the family. Oh, we got so much to pray for y'all. So much to pray for. And I just... We have to watch, we have to be careful and watch for this Jezebel spirit that is spreading like an infection in the land because it's going to cause the demise of a lot of countries. Exactly. And and um Adam was the one who got the charge not to eat their fruit, not Eve. And just like Adam disappeared and left Eve to herself to go be enticed by that devil, that's the same thing our brothers and, and men are doing to us right now by stepping back. The devil is ministering to the women all over again. 
we're going to be in trouble all over again. Amen, Sister Marie. That Elder Marie, that was powerful because that's so true. And even when you, um, when I want to say, um, the Evangelist Gwen was saying how the women over there is cutting their hair. That's a direct rebellion before God because the Bible talks about how the woman's hair is her glory. So why would you cut cut that off? You know, but um. Even how you was just saying um, about the Muslims uh, waiting for the Mahdi to come. I want to say that's how you pronounced it. But um, they're supposed to be, I want to say like, well, God, so many years ago, there was this man preaching and he talked about how, you know, how the Temple Mount what he said he believed that God showed him was that that um, the Antichrist was going to tell them um, where the real temple um, place where the temple was built at. You know what I mean? And and so um, he said he believed it was going to come about where wherever they think the temple was. Satan gonna show them where the real temple mount have been, and it's going that's what's gonna bring the union between the um Muslims and the Jews because they'll be able to be side by side because where they think the temple mount is, it's not. Um, that was one of the theories, which I I kind of lean towards that just because of what Jesus said. He said, when you remember when he walked outside the temple. And he told them, he said, they said, Jesus, you know, look at the temple. Have you seen the temple? And he said, and speaking in twofold prophecy, which was one, his body, but two, the real building. He said, if you, this temple be torn down in three days, I'll raise it back up. But then he went on to tell them, he said, listen, he said, they're going to tear this temple down brick by brick. Not one stone is going to be left upon another stone. It's impossible for Christ to, to lie. That's why I do not believe that wall that they go and worship to it has anything to do with the original temple because God said there's not going to be one stone laid upon another one. As a matter of fact, they say if you go into the interpretation of it, God let them know they shall lay this temple flat. Flat. So I believe that that's what makes me believe they going to find out too. Like I kind of lead to what the pastor has said. I wish I remembered the man name, but it was years ago. I heard this message and he was saying how he really do believe that um, the Antichrist is going to say, this is where the real temple was not here. Like the, like a, a discovery, you know, but the Bible said he shall speak great, and lying wonders, great and false and lying wonders. But there's going to be such a spirit of deception loose until the people are going to believe it as truth. Whereas we as saints, the Bible let us know, it's not going to catch us unaware because we know the word of God. We've been in his presence and, and um, meditated on his word. So we're going to know the truth. So it ain't going to be able to overtake us but the ones that have not been in his presence that spirit of the or let me say it this way the way and i thank you holy spirit the one that don't have no true relationship with christ that spirit of deception gonna overtake them it's gonna overtake them and that's the sad part but that was one of them and i know my um Husband will always tell me about what they believe as far as the Muslims is that Jesus didn't totally die, you know, that God took him before he died. But we all know that's a lie, you know, but this thing is so deep. It's getting, it's deep. It's deep how close we are and what we're witnessing. It's deep. Yes, Sister Serena, thank you. Because you know what? He did say not one brick would be on top of another. I, I already 
it's not it because that wall, that wailing wall where they go over there and just be bouncing their head over there, that's that has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with with where the um where the temple was. We'll never know. We'll never know until Christ is ready to reveal that thing. You know, and Amen. If, if he allows the Antichrist to, to reveal it, then you know he'll reveal it. But if not, then we won't know until Christ decides how he wants us to know but i thank god like you said there's so many people that are being deceived right now we see that spirit that deceiving spirit in the land so many people are rejecting christ i mean so many people are outright blaspheming and rejecting christ and they can't separate him from religion and they just they make a mockery out of god and it's 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 just it's out of control so you can't in some situations you can't even speak to people about christ because they get they don't just get angry they get violently angry when you talk to them and try to minister christ to them they are so consumed by the devil and and his deceptions it, it's rough out here gotta have that armor on Amen. I'm going to read that Revelations um, chapter 12, um, chapter 12, verse 12. It goes right along with what you were saying, um, Elder Marie. It says, therefore rejoice, ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that, his, that he has but a short time. So that tells you he understands, and I think that's what we got to do, because Satan already understand his time frame. He understand I got this, that, this, and this to do. I got to get this done. So he working towards getting that done because he understand his time frame. But I want to say, um, I think we all have said it, but if we understood for real how close we are to this devil revealing himself and to us seeing our savior because for us he coming back as king but for the world who do reject him he's coming back as judge he said i'm coming back i got my wrath with me and i think that's what the world is missing because we preach so much on his love so we don't talk about the god and me and sister gwen just had this this conversation the other day we don't talk about the god that went in there and beat them with a stick and threw over the tables and said y'all get just get out just get out my father's house just get out we don't talk about that you know what i mean and it is so beautiful and i do believe god is going to strengthen us just like um elder i mean sister evangelist gwen said because the bible do talk about how when um Stephen was being persecuted and killed. I'm sorry, as they was bricking him, he said how Jesus, the heavens opened up and he saw Jesus just standing up. Just like God showing them, I'm waiting for you. They could take your life, but they cannot take your soul. And I believe that's why God told us, don't fear him who could destroy your body. Like, this is the type of stuff we're going to have to start preaching and ministering to each other so we can stand. Don't fear him who could destroy your body. Your body, that's, that's, I already said, that's going to return back to the dust. That's what God said. I already said that's going back to the dust. But fear him who could destroy your body and your soul. And the only one that could do that is Christ because we have to submit ourselves to the devil for him to even be able to destroy our soul. We got to believe his lies. We got to take his word as truth. We got to say, okay, like, let me use my own self. Like I, I got in a, um, I started getting a little prideful the other day. So I said, I'm going to go outside, you know, make sure I put some clothes on and make sure people know I ain't depressed just out of pride, you know, just because um, I hadn't really gave this testimony, but I really asked my husband for a divorce because I'm just, I'm just over the whole situation. But you know, so my pride kicked in. Like I'm gonna get, 
some clothes on and I'm going to go outside, God, and just make sure people know I ain't depressed and that, you know. So I just got this heaviness on me because I knew what God said to me. He told me, you be still till I release you to move. So I said, oh, I don't, you know, but I'm me being prideful. I'm going to get dressed, God. I'm going to go outside and let people see me, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't have no peace, no peace, no peace, no peace. And now, then I said, Lord God, I'm going to have to confess this thing. So I went and started confessing it to my kids because they was the only one there. And I said, but I, I decided I'm not going to move because all I was moving out of is my pride. And I and as soon as I released that thing and I said, God, I'm not going to move. I said, you told me to be still. I'm going to be still. And I'm telling you, that thing just lifted off of me. But that enemy would have had me act on something that probably nobody ain't even thinking about. Ain't nobody thinking about it. He just put a thought in Serena's head and I was getting ready to act on that thought. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to show them. But I thank and praise God. I, I, and y'all help me if I quote this word wrong. But it says, God said, if we will judge it ourselves, then he wouldn't have to. You know, and I'm Elder Marie be finding them scriptures super quick too. So I, I know you know what I'm talking about. But he said, if you judge it yourself, then he wouldn't have to. And I think that's the way we're going to have to begin to just minister to each other like, Let's begin to even judge our own selves so that when these things come up on us, we can resist the devil. And the Bible says he shall flee from us because he don't got no power over us at all, at all. We have to submit ourselves to him. If we didn't, then God wouldn't say resist him. Then God wouldn't say resist him. But I'm telling y'all, we need to we need to build up our most holy faith our most holy faith where the bible said jesus said when i come back will i find faith yes all this is going to be going on but if our faith is wrapped up tied up and tangled in jesus can nothing get to us amen thank you <laughs> thank you for that uh scripture amen and this is why we have to cover our minds because the only way the enemy can get us is by ministering to us. Hear me. The only way that the enemy can get you to think people caring about anything. You know, you're going to go out and, and show everybody you're not depressed. And people, since they probably ain't even thinking about you. Amen. Amen, amen. They're so busy worried about how they're going to afford eggs and stupid stuff like that. So the enemy will have you thinking all kind of foolishness. And this is why we have to have on that helmet of salvation that will guard our minds. We have to keep our minds. That's why he said he who, who thinks on Christ keeps his mind in perfect peace. God will keep you in perfect peace. You got to read that word. You got to have that helmet of salvation. You got when stupid thoughts come in your mind, rebuke it. I rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm not, I don't agree with that because the enemy will make you think something to make you think that that was your thought. That's not your thought. He is cunning. He is a master deceiver. God said the father of lies. He's been doing this for thousands of years, y'all. He good. And he's relentless. And this is why we find ourselves depressed or overwhelmed or tired. And we start complaining and moaning and groaning. We got to get out of that. And we got to learn how to call. You know, it confuses and it upsets the enemy when he know he doing his best to bring us down and to make us feel like less than. And when we just bust out and praise. And they start worshiping Christ and reading the word and quoting God's word out loud. It drives him absolutely insane. So we have got to cover our minds. This is something that Christ ministered to me very recently. 
because I was feeling overwhelmed and I was feeling like you, like, uh, you know, enough. You know, you get these thoughts that you think are your thoughts, but they're not your thoughts. The enemy can't minister to you when you're in your right mind. So he, he goes into a situation that you're in and he implants himself and then he starts to minister his foolishness in the middle of whatever trial or test you're going through. And then you start to feel overwhelmed. But we got to remember that our help and our hope is in Christ and Christ alone. I say it all the time, look to the hills. That's not just a word. You better look up. God said, look up. If we call on him, if we call his name, if we just believe, we got to have faith and trust and believe. It's not, it's, don't just say it. We could just walk around quoting scripture all day long. But if that thing is not in your heart, if you're not walking around believing that thing and that thing is not ministering to you, you ain't doing nothing but quoting scripture. That thing got to be embedded deep down in your heart. It got to minister to you. And you cannot remain in a state of depression. You cannot be remain in a state of being overwhelmed when you put the word of God on it. When you put Christ in your situation, you can't help but to come up out of that thing. Because God won't allow you, his word won't allow you to wallow. So I'm just encouraging us, cover your mind, gird up your mind. What do you say? Gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up. Because the enemy is not, he ain't taking no prisoners. He ain't playing with us. And we got to get in this battle and get serious. We are the end time warriors. We are. We have been called for such a time as this. God has called us to come to the front line in this battle. It's not by happenstance that this is the time that he opened up our eyes and our understanding. He got work for us to do. And he gonna put you out there. So you might as well get yourself together and get in this battle. It's already won. If you go in with the mindset that I have already defeated this foe, you go in with Holy Ghost boldness and confidence. Come on, somebody. Y'all better come on. Amen. 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 Actually, that's one of the prayers that I pray over everybody. Um, when we've been praying for one accord, on one accord, is to cover everybody's mind because that's where I know that's where it starts. So I'm glad that you just reiterate that because that is the truth. Amen, sis. That's why I think of praise God. After I, after I confessed that thing and dealt with my pride, I'm telling y'all, God gave me such peace. I got in that kitchen, made some baked macaroni and cheese, some broccoli, and um, fried some chicken. It was good. <laughs> like, thank you, Father God. And then got into some worship. We had a beautiful time. You got to rebuke yourself sometimes. so y'all those were the only those were the, the the few things that I just wanted to you know bring to you guys attention to just be watchful what's going on over there in Iran those things are totally relevant for the you know the prophecy fulfilling in times what we see in revelation everything that's coming it's totally relevant and I just keep emphasizing these things because many times 
Um, as people, as believers, we don't pay attention to what's going on outside of our immediate circle. If it's not affecting us, we're not paying attention to it. We're not paying attention to what's going on outside of our, our, our city, much less our state, much less the country. And we're really not paying attention to what's going on overseas. So, you know, to just really be watchful and mindful, you know, I don't want to bore nobody, but to me, these things were heavy on me. Um, because I know that they're relevant. So I just wanted to share these things to be watchful, be mindful. If they say this my be is here, then we know that something is about to transpire next and that prophecy is being fulfilled. So anyway, now of course we're not looking for the Mahdi. Never are we looking for the Mahdi. We we keeping our eyes on the Messiah, the true and living God, but we are, but the Bible does tell us to be watchful, be watchful. Okay, so in the very the very last thing that I want to share with y'all, this is not nothing that I, I want y'all to be watchful for, but I just got to share this because this is ridiculous. Okay. Now, Elder, you talked this morning about the LGBT community and you talked about the, how the men are going around and they are carrying tampons on them to pretend that they have periods. Okay. Now, um, I, now I, I went back today and I just went to Genesis 6 and I just reread it because I just wanted to see what God said. Because remember in those days when he flooded the earth, he said he regretted that he even made man. And he was so grieved at the wickedness that was going on because the hearts of men was just pure wicked in everything that they did. And we're coming on that time now, like where like everything is just an abomination and the, to the point where they are trying to make us believe that these things are true, holy, and acceptable, and right. They're trying to change and conform our minds. They are trying, like, to the point where it's become a delusion, okay? Like, I'm talking about to the point where the I'm not talking about just the LGBTQ. I'm talking about people in general that are conforming to this. It's becoming a straight-up delusion. Like, people are no longer walking in reality okay so the men in the lgbt community these transgender men like elder said this morning on the prayer, prayer line that they are carrying around um tampons in their purse i guess it just and i seen one man online talking about it i guess it just makes him feel feminine it makes him feel truly like a woman i don't know and it, it was almost as if he kind of like makes it visible that he has the tampon so everybody can know like i'm on my period because i'm just such a woman you know women we don't even do that right okay but okay but this is the part that got me now y'all it's one thing to put a tampon in your purse to pretend that you're coming on your period when you don't have a period. But it's another thing that now they have what they call, I, I want to throw up even what I'm about to say. I just feel like throwing up, y'all. Okay, listen. I, it's hard to get it out because I'm just about to throw up. They're taking, this is a thing, y'all. This is a really thing. They're taking um, tomato juice right and it's in the form of like a popsicle like how a freeze pop because it's in that little plastic so it just looks like a freeze pop right but it's not as long necessarily and they're taking these frozen red tomato freeze pops and they're sticking it in their crevices or whatever they have down there and they're letting it I guess melt and drip out and they're calling that their period so and they're uh, shut up stop stop no no they're not that is too far that is too far i wish i was lying and i wish i was making this up y'all that's disturbing this is how far the delusion has come and then they want us to go along with it and say yeah oh hey girl you need a, a tampon i got one because you're on your period that's not like to me that should be a red flag if you have to do that that you're not a woman and you have a fake period and where did you stick that popsicle because what hole do you have and then be careful because you're your butthole is not supposed to have vegetable juice in it. Can you get a vegetable yeast infection? I don't know. Is that even healthy? This is just, and, but they want us to believe this and go along with it, y'all. As women, remember when we came on our peers, we were taught discretion, right? My grandma told me like, you know, you wrap that pad up and you put the newspaper and you put it in the trash and don't nobody should see it. Nobody's supposed to know you on your period. 
this is the day that we're in, y'all. I, I, I can't take it. No, when I seen that, I was so, I'm like, God, help us, help us, help us, help us. That wasn't something. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. I was utterly disgusted. They insist that they have periods. They insist that they are women. They insist that we accept them as women. That's demons. It is. But they are insistent. And they get so offended. And here's the thing. A real woman doesn't have to be validated. Wow. We don't have to be validated. Right. And baby, trust me, when it was time for that monthly sister to come around, you are miserable. The last thing you want to do is let somebody know that you on your period. Because if they ask you, you just want to fight them. Like, why are you in my business? So, like, yeah, it's it's demonic. It's all demonic. Oh, but to top it off, Elder, to, I, well, if you've seen it, you might have seen the part to, to get the discomfort, they're taking x lax pills with it. So that way they could get the cramping and the bowel movement, which is even more disgusting. But OK, fine, whatever. I don't understand that. But they're trying to make it as real as possible, y'all. But this is delusional. This is the society that we're living in. This is delusional and it's disturbing. And we just have to stand firm, like seriously. I'm assuming nobody on this line is it's falling under the delusion, but people around the world, same people, people we know, people we love are literally conforming to this and being like, no, they're a woman. And we have to be careful. There's a spirit attached to this that is literally um, seducing people into this doctrine. Yeah, that's sick. That's like Elder Marie, what Marie was just saying. It's like they are effeminizing the men and causing the women to be masculine. It's like it's switched, you know what I mean? The role switch. They want to masculate, um, cause the women to be masculine and, excuse me, and make the women, the men to be feminine. So it's, it really is sick and disturbing. But yeah, you could tell we, that, that spirit of uh, delusion hasn't, totally been released like it is going to be but you could definitely see that it's here you could definitely see that it's here and that's terrible that is terrible ladies and this is all in preparation for the antichrist because he is a homosexual he is a yeah. he is a transgender he is all those different things and this is why they're pushing it so hard because when he comes he has to be accepted and so the whole world has to be in a state of delusion and believing it because I'm telling you, whoever this person is, whoever they, we know it's a beast system, but whoever they put as that antichrist, that man, that son of perdition, whoever he is, he's a homosexual. I'm trying to tell you. And Amen. They, I believe that because the Bible okay. says he shall not desire a woman. Yep. And we, they're preparing the world for him. When I seen it, I was like, okay, I don't believe everything I see. So I just started Googling it on different places. I went to YouTube. I went to the regular internet. You know, I just went to different places and it was coming up all over. It's multiple videos, different things, instructions, how to do this, how to make a period and so on and so forth. So this is a real thing. This is not just one little prank video. This is a real trend and a real thing. I just, I can't do no more. So again, y'all, I, that was not part of the, the Watchmen on the Wall news, but I, I had to just vent and get that out because that was just, I can't, I just can't take it. All right, what else y'all got before we uh pray out? Hey, when I was younger, there was this guy, his name was Donnie. He used to work at McKee Sport. <laughs> he was a homosexual. He got fired because some nurse was arguing with him about not doing his job. And he was like, you know, just hold on. I got my period. I don't feel like this. <laughs> and they tired of it and made him, gave him free <laughs> Free mental health, like five of them things free <laughs> if he thought he had a period. And now today it's acceptable. <laughs> That's sad. One more thing. I know it's time to go. One more thing. 
<laughs> for those of us that have children and grandchildren. We we um have YouTube channels that they have for children. You know, they have so-called safe channels for children. So if you set up a YouTube account for your child and you say your child is between the age of nine and 12 or five and seven or seven and nine, you know, when you um set that account up, they do suggested videos for your child to watch. You know, just like with us, when we turn on YouTube and we, you know, they see what we watch and then they do the suggested videos. But with the children, as soon as you set up their account, the first thing that they are introduced to is it's okay to be gay. Um, they talk about transgenderism. They talk about girls loving girls and boys loving boys. They talk about the 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 family and the new way the family looks. So, y'all, please talk to your children. Talk to your grandchildren if you're that age and you have any. Talk to their parents. Everything that these children are watching, you have to watch. If these children are playing Roblox, it was a lady that was talking about her daughter got pregnant on Roblox. And this is supposed to be a children's game. This is like five and seven and eight year olds playing this game. And they say they hear babies crying and the, the children are having children in that video game, in that Roblox video game. And, and one lady was like, yeah, my 14 year old son has 13 children in the game. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's get back on the gate. Let's get back to being parents and governing and watching what our children are watching because they are grooming our babies. And that's it. I, that's all I want to say. I have a question, just way off the subject. Um, Mormon. What is a Mormon and do they believe in Jesus Christ? Mormons believe that this, that their main belief is that, excuse me, is that we are black because we are punished. God punished us and our punishment was to turn us black. They believe they have a skewered um, belief of who God is, just like every other religion. Um, Mormonism, um, I think they, they believe that their founders, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're close to, um, uh, Latter day Saints, right? They have that kind of same belief system where they believe they believe in Christ, but they don't believe he is the son of man, the, the redeemer, our father coming back to judge this world. I know they follow John Smith. John Smith is like, I don't know, from like the 1800s or, or no, no, maybe like 1700s or something like that. It's a man who they believe is a prophet and they follow him to get to Jesus. Right. But they do believe that we're black because we were cursed. Okay. Well, these two men came to my door and they were, you know, talking to me or whatever, but I couldn't um, get to them because I wasn't, you know, properly dressed. So I was, you know, I gave them my phone number. So they called me and they were talking about the Mormon, you know, and stuff. And they had a discussion with me about Jesus and asked me, you know, that I believe. And I was like, yes, he's my Lord and Savior, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was just telling them, you know, things I knew in the Bible and, you know, and stuff like that. And just like when I got off the phone, I was like, I don't even know if I should be talking to these people. I don't know nothing about this religion. I don't want nobody, you know, um, penetrating me like with nothing so that's why I ask anybody that has a founder any religion that has a founder Jesus is not that founder that's somebody you need to walk away from no smell because they have their own doctrine they have their own um, belief system and they deny the power of who Christ is because they put man and their traditions above Christ. No problem. Thank you. Elder Marie, you said they believe we was cursed black. 
Yes, it's a whole video out. If I find that video, I'm gonna try to put it in um in um the the group me chat. It's a whole video out that talks about how um we are we are cursed. We are we are um because of some sin that we did and, and God, because he was angry with us, he cursed us and made us black. It's like a cartoon. It's a cartoon. I know y'all seen, y'all may have seen it. It's on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find it. I wonder if that's the same teaching where I've seen it before, where they believe that when Noah cursed his sons for seeing him naked, he cursed and Canaan came from that line and they made he made Canaan black and so is it from the line of Canaan? Yeah. Okay, something like that. Yeah. It's amazing what people believe. <laughs> I mean amazing. The deception is crazy. Amen. Well, I wish I had saved that video. I'm going to find it. You say you looked at it on YouTube, Elder Marie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, if you go back into your history, you may be able to find it. I don't know how long ago um, you looked at it, but if you go on YouTube and you click library at the bottom right-hand corner, yeah it was a while ago since um okay. yeah it was a while ago but um uh, i'm gonna I'm a find that video because when i was sitting there with my mouth open the whole time looking like i was crazy because <clears throat> they tried to um like make it in a cartoon like make it you know i guess appeal to children and it was just like y'all gotta be kidding me And y'all who have been praying, I know a lot of y'all have been praying for 2K. I just want to testify, like, please just keep praying and keep covering him because, man, he has not fallen in over two weeks. Like, you know, he has some little falls, but normal falls, like just fall on his butt. You know, he all right, nothing big. And that's even been few, you know what I mean? But he has not fallen on his face. His mouth is literally, it's healing. Like, it's almost totally healed. You could barely see it because before he just kept falling and it kept reopening the wound and his mouth wouldn't heal and so on and so forth. but he has not fallen forward at all so please just keep him covered in prayer because your prayers are working God is hearing he has been and he's been actually just doing really well like totally making progress like so to the point where it's just so hopeful like it's just so hopeful so I've just had so much more hope that I've just been working with him more and more and more and I've just been seeing a lot of progress so I think and praise God for, for answering and hearing and I think and praise God for you guys that are praying and just keeping him in prayer because yes Lord we need it we need it amen amen praise God All right, Toya, I'm glad you made it on. Listen, sis, don't forget to, to join us. Come back. Talk to us. All right, y'all. Y'all ready to pray out? Um, I got the prayer list for next week. Um, y'all, don't forget to chime in. We love you, too. Don't forget to chime in. I know one of them days last week I missed. I didn't send out no alert, y'all. I just totally like just missed it. So it's too many of us, y'all. Make sure y'all is chiming in and sending out these alerts so we can remind each other to stay on one accord and pray together. All right. Who did anybody want to? Anybody got any last thing? And we can go ahead and pray out. Did anybody want to pray out? Um, I don't want to pray out, but I do want to um <clears throat> say that. Um, I definitely want us to go ahead and do that study on faith, building up our faith. Yes, praise God. Praise God. Um, yeah, did you want to explain it, uh, sis? Um, no, you can go ahead. You want me to? Yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just us uh, looking up scriptures on when you want to do it. Um, the evangelist. Can we do it next week? 
next week while it's fresh. I know we were supposed to do Corinthians, the last two chapters, but we could do that. And, you know, if we don't, you know, we'll just do the faith first. If we get into it, we do. If we don't, we don't. You know what I mean? God laid this on your heart. So let's go this way, whatever God laid on you. A girl, let me tell you, after you told me, God gave me a scripture, I was like, yes, this is it, Lord. Thank you. It, it, it really just blessed me. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> About faith? Yes, yes. And I know, I know you're going to use it to bless us. Yeah, um, <clears throat> just all of us look up scriptures that help strengthen one another's faith. We're like, what we trusting in God to do in, in everybody's life on here, all that's asking for prayer, the ones who haven't asked for prayer. Let's find us some scriptures, faith, faith speaking scriptures that we could just keep or even write down or just go to in our little if we should get down, God forbid, but you'll have those scriptures to, you know, to fall back on. So that's all I was thinking that if all of us could just get some scriptures and have like five minutes to say why you picked that scripture and um, how it builds up your faith. Amen. When will this be? Next day or? Yeah, on Monday. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get to the last two chapters, but this uh, God laid this on Sister Serena Hart, and it's very, you know, timely for where we're at. So we just thank and praise God for that. And um, yeah. And I know we were supposed to get to it today, and I ain't, I ain't mean to take y'all all the way off track, but like I said, these things, these things was just heavy on my heart. This new legislation is just heavy on my heart because I'm just like, God, we got to be getting ready and preparing for what they're what they're doing. All right, y'all. Um, anybody want to pray out? I thank you for this tonight. It was beautiful, and I really got a lot out of it. So thank you.